Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson, and I'm here once again in our super best fancy fancy talk 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 test location in the southwest of England. So today is an extra special episode of Heavy Repping because we are having a chat with one of the big big lads in the pick game. That's right, I've had a chance to sit down with Matt Halliday of Stone Age Picks. Now Matt and I have talked before, it was about a year and a half or so ago, and this is us kind of catching up because the brand has blown up something fierce uh, in the last year. And so if you would like to read the original interview, which is uh, quite an insight into the size and reach of the company at the time, you can do that at the link down in the description. Uh, but instead of me waffling on, I shall hand you over to me and Matt uh, to continue this story. So without further ado, let's go. Firstly, Matt, thanks very much for taking the time to sit down and have a chat with me properly over video this time. Yeah, I really appreciate, you know, just being here and it takes a lot to get me on camera. So you oh, really appreciate something that. special here. <laughs> <laughs> now, people who are coming to this video might not know that you and I have spoken before in an interview. And that was all the way back in February of last year. It's a bit ago in, in business time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so at that time, you'd been around about a year. And... Yeah, just about eight months, right? About something like that. Yeah. And in that, in the period since then and now, it's been, I've watched Stone Age go like that. So it's been, it's been quite exciting from the outside. It's been a ride. Just uh, seeing people play with them is all... Like all the joy I need, honestly. Having some of these artists that I've been up on for maybe like a decade, some of them, they, they've come around and they're playing playing Stone Age. So it really, it's really re rewarding in that sense. So last time I spoke to you, uh, you had Rupam Garg, was one of your guys. Um, he's now uh, an Abassi Concepts artist and has blown up quite a bit himself. And you had uh, Connor Kaminsky, who's a great player as well. Uh, Connor and Rupam. I mean, yeah. recently Rupam got into Guitar World. Um, like, uh, I guess they released his track on guitarworld.com, and that got a lot of traction. And I did a giveaway with him, and that was some, some great um, exposure on both our ends, just kind of, you know, uh, co promoting each other. And, um, yeah, Connor Kamiski. I mean, the the stuff that he's pulling off these days, and the, the quality and time into his covers, and and just he's an overall good dude. I mean, you've seen the videos with his girlfriend. I mean, he's got he yeah. he goes viral just for those videos. He's you know I've seen him on other platforms just for his comedic and for his photography skills also. So yeah. he's a very all around you know. He's a content creator. He's very good at it. He's getting up there, and and yeah. I just see him progressing in, in all sense, you know, uh, video editing and, and his 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 skills. And I'm very glad to have him on the team. I mean, he was one of the first one of the first few artists I I, I started picking up on, and I I just I knew he had some so. And you said that you've got, uh, and obviously I have seen various things uh, come up on the Instagram, but I'd like to, from your perspective, uh, I'd like you to just fill the viewers in on who else you've had playing Stone Age over the last 12 months. Oh yeah, some new artists that I, I personally like. Um, I mean, I've been listening to uh, Drusif or uh, Drew Reynolds for about 10 years now. And he's just a monster player. Like he, one of the hardest hitting, uh, you know, pickers I've come to know. And to see him play with one is beyond me. It's still kind of surreal in a sense that when I hear his stuff, I just get goosebumps, man. He and his uh, style of writing has always intrigued me in terms of the heavy, but also very emotional. And he does some some wild pick rakes and. Uh, squeals that just will. I think the the um, 
the pop that the Stone Age gives those things. Um, he said he's told me that it, it accentuates his playing, and uh, he hasn't really been able to get the the, the same pick break sound from uh, any other pick. So there, there's some subtle advantages in, in the heavy the heavy world of low tunings and thicker gauge strings. So uh, Robert Granados of the Halicone effect, I believe it's called. He uh, He's actually going to school in like my hometown. So oh, really? we're, we're probably gonna hopefully try to get together one of these days, but to meet these people would be great because I've been listening to his stuff for a few years now. And uh, it's it's very, it's, it's very technical. And mm. I can, uh, he's a classical guitarist um, in, in school at Yale. And um, he's just very talented, good dude. So what I look for in an artist, it isn't your followers, it isn't, you know, can you shred? Like, you gotta have good principles and a good authentic following. And only only a certain uh, caliber of people can deliver that. Gabe of Visena, and uh, he's, um, He's from uh, Canada, which isn't too far away. So I like to keep him local, but it's uh, it's nice to see him play with one. I uh, always listen to Visena and um, the uh, the other guitarist Giuseppe from Italy. He he's another contender that they're just like these players are playing stuff that's way up and beyond anything I could I dreamt of hearing you know just a couple of years yeah. ago so these this technical metal community is like just stepping up the game exponentially where you're just hearing stuff you just haven't heard anywhere else did you not do a thing with fall of troy oh yeah so the fall of troy tommy you know um thomas eric the lead singer and lead guitarist and we got to talking and he had some somehow tried out a pick somewhere and, and, and wanted to know more about it and, and play play with one and sample one for himself. So I had sent him one along and he he was he loved it. I mean I I don't I think he was he was writing a new album at the time and it was just he just said, This thing is spewing just it, it just I'm so influenced by it, man. I don't know what's happening but it's it's writing. It's writing for me. And I just said, Wow man, that's like it's an honor. You know, me um, s s sitting in my friend's room a after high school, smoking weed, playing Guitar Hero. You, you hear the fall of Troy on Guitar Hero, man. Like, it's that stuff's just surreal. I mean, again, Tommy's one of the nicest guys. He uh, let me make a um, limited set of 10 etched picks with the logo, their new logo and uh, the venue name and the date of the show. And it was right in Boston. So I just took the train like an hour into the city and got to flip some, some merch at the Fall of Troy table, which oh, was, it was, that was just great, you know, all around for both parties. I mean, he, we're, I'm getting the exposure and we're, we're selling some limited stuff. The, the people that got them were very happy but also we, you know, split the funds and like it, music, musicians don't make enough money if any any way you can with merch these days, um, yeah. just to stay alive. So I was glad in that sense to be able to, you know, reciprocate and help him out and help each, you know, we just help each other out. That's, that's how we get by these days, you know, in these times, honestly. No, for sure. That was like a dream come true, man, listening. Paul Troy for you know a decade plus and then being able to to be in that space somehow you know I know obviously there's a lot of guys in the tech uh, and gent community that are playing Stone Age stuff I've seen it I've heard it I've talked to guys at work about it because it, it I think the reason for that if I may say from an outsider's perspective is the fact that when you're playing with loads of gain um, there's a certain note separation that you get from the stone that you don't get from plastic and wood. There's a, just an extra sort of sparkle and clarity to it, especially with loads of drive on. Yeah, I, in my eyes, I, I think it's just a tad brighter. Mm. Um, 
it might be the dynamics that you can employ that makes it better um, in terms of the range. Uh, say you're playing with the high gain. You could really put some harsh bite on that note if you want. But with the stone, if you hit it really light, you still get the full volume. I do a lot of, you know, tech tremolo type, palm mute, slightly palm muted runs. Yeah. And I've noticed with the rigid, uh, you know, rigid pick in general, but more so with the stone, that if you give a nice three quarter palm mute, but give it that extra attack, you, you have this control that's just, I, I don't know how to say it but it's very precise there's a certain type of player that seems to gravitate towards stone age uh, as a as a tool um particularly heavy players as, as this seems to be the way have you had any players come up to you uh, that have been surprising in terms of the styles they've done yeah so it, the first one that comes to mind is um because not a lot of my players honestly do play clean um i'll, I'll be first to say that because it's yeah. the truth but um Gerd Zimmerman, um, he's from the Philippines, and he did this uh, he did this comparison video on his Facebook. Um, I'll try to link it to some of my stuff recent when we do post this, because it's it's very um, it, it's got the, he he pulls this angelic tone out of it, and, and, and does a comparison between like you know plastic jazz three, and then he does the stone, but like. If for some reason this video and whatever guitar there was a night and day difference and it, it was the response uh, internationally was great because he, he's from the Philippines has a very um, <clears throat> diverse following but mostly in the Philippines so there was just so so much talk about it and and, and I got a, a lot of orders you know from the Philippines when I was getting none and uh, it was just great to see that people people actually heard the difference I just it wasn't just me because you know it's very hard for me to very biased opinion but um, to, to really hear the feedback um, that you know clean tone wise because I'm always worried you know the pick can make a lot of pick noise if you're not careful it's just yeah. how the stone is I don't know but but if you know how to play with it and you know what you're doing you get the proper picking dynamics out of it and, and in that video he did and I, I just I, I'll always you know commend him for that because I really appreciate when people put out the content. Speaking of international there's something you posted a wee while ago uh, I think it was about number of followers or a, a particular anniversary of a period in time and you mentioned something about the fact that Stone Age is now in X number of countries yeah, I know, and that's like mind blowing. Yeah. I, like I don't even so right now probably sixty five. I I don't want to say seventy yet because it's probably not there, but it's close, and that's ridiculous to me. I just yeah, like, it's my fingerprint, my thumbprint's been around the world, kind of. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, I just want to keep putting out the good quality to keep the good name up, and and when when someone hears that Stone Age is gonna. Hopefully it'd be like, you know, Dunlop or something. Uh, so when I spoke to you the first time, um, I can't even remember where you were. I think you were you, st were you in Vermont back then? I moved into my aunt's house to uh, do some work on her farm. You know, just keep a roof above my head and have a good, a safe place to be. So at that point, I was just putting the pieces together for a shop in terms of... Um, you know, grinding wheels and whatnot. And uh, I'd taken my last paycheck and bought some grinding wheels and some agate stone. And um, I had to be in my aunt's for a short period of time to establish myself. But uh, after about six months, I moved out of there and uh, onto another shop. All these have been like off site. It's Vermont, so there's a lot of like uh, barns and you know just offsite garages. So you know you make do with what you have. So every shop I've had has has been very small, like ten by ten. And um, I've just learned to do. You know that's what you have. So you, my to operation right now doesn't require much, which is good for the new shop. Uh, 
we moved to a couple basements and a couple, you know, garages. But right now, I've recently um, purchased five acres of land, which has a a tiny, uh, tiny shop, tiny shop. It's a six by ten trailer, but you know, just framed like a house, wrapped like a house. I'm looking to get the roof on, side it, but it's running off solar right now, so it's doing its thing at the moment. I, I live in an apartment. The stone activities couldn't continue here forever. No, you know no, it's pretty not. loud. Yeah. Some some steps, I'll say. Yeah. But um, yeah. So before we got in trouble for that, <laughs> we we, <laughs> we got got out of Dodge and um, putting the pieces together just for a sustainable, uh, low overhead, low expense. That's how you win the game in the long run. Um, yeah. If if I'm sitting here sacrificing money that needs to go into the brand for other things, you know, as soon as you start making cuts where you shouldn't be, bad things will happen. And and like I said, you know, these times it's very it's very tough. So we just try to keep it low expense, low overhead. And you, uh, I've seen a lot of stuff on your page about, uh, especially because you mentioned the solar thing that a lot of i think is it 75 percent of the workshop runs off straight solar right now um roughly 60 to 75 percent i mean i'll list stuff at home on the computer um sure i could probably list it at the tiny house um mm. so there's like there's some aspects where i just need to be um at home and do it but hopefully we'll get toward that hundred I mean, that's the goal. Um, and and recently, there's new machinery in the works. As for power needs, I mean, we're met. You know, I just, it, there's such a high that that, that, you, that you can get off running off solar somehow. It's a like, I don't know. The picks don't sound any better, but they feel better to produce. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about um, your outlook and how that's changed in the last year. So some aspects that have changed uh, for me personally uh, to to grow and build the brand is more me uh, stepping back and looking at it from the perspective of the customer uh, instead of how I want to do things and uh, looking at myself more as an employee or else nothing would get done actually, <laughs> honestly. So. I gotta be hard on myself to get the work done, but uh, the way I, I looked at it is definitely from the um, customer perception. Um, okay, I'm getting a stone pick. Um, you know, is it is it gonna hurt my strings? Is it gonna hurt my guitar? Like, I, I always tried to um, get the finish just right, so all these things don't happen and just putting that extra time into the QC, which is such a big thing now. Um, the internet can, will <clears throat> make or break a company. <laughs> Very true. So what I, I've always tried to uh, recently step back and, and look at the product from, from different eyes, I guess you would say. It, you know, it's gotta be perfect for it to go out to the customer now. And with that extra stock, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not so tempted to push it out the door, you know. That that's yeah. always good now. So to have that leeway, um, I think the overall quality is just getting better. I mean, it's a it's a it's a rock. They all can't be winners, but but right now I have the time and uh, you know um, processes in place to to. to look at it more further and say hey that one needs another look over and it's got to go you know whether it be more tumbling reshaping um, all that so I think just you always got to look at it from the view of the customer because uh, you know I know my work's good but it's it's not it's not good if the customer's not getting the the pro the the proper product, mm -hmm. and it was it was scary for a while being out of stock like that. The um, 
the rush on things. It's, yeah. it's like, uh, I don't, I don't want to be rushed to do this. No, type of course. Of it. You know, you always pay for it on the back end. Those of you who are watching might not know the amount of work that has to go in to making stone picks. It's not like injection molding. It's not like cutting through a CNC. It's, you know, there's a lot of hand labor involved. And the thing that I found was really wonderful, the way the community kind of came around you and were like, no, nah, hold on, we don't agree. You know, how did that feel from your end? Well, obviously, being being a one-man show at that point, there's a lot of hats I wear um, and a lot of roles I have to play. Um, so customer interaction is, is always time-consuming. <sighs> Listing stuff, shipping stuff. So, you know, where is the time for production? So, I mean, I try to... Uh, it's gotten so much better now, but, you know, the ghost incident... You know, I kept listing stuff and this one person happened to pop in in the shop and it's always sold out. Oh, it's always sold out. But I'm listing them every other day. And um, to see the community come around that and just like post their pics, like, it's definitely not a ghost product, I'll tell you that. Because they, no, they, stick, around for, they <laughs> stick around for years. So you're going to see them for a while, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> You know, and, and being sold out, I want to cater to everyone's, um, you know, uh, needs for sizing and all that. But it just wasn't possible at that mm. point. And that, that customer had bought from me before and was happy with his pick, but just was frustrated with yeah. it being sold out all the time. And, uh, you know, you can't you can't please everybody. In the subject of this, and I, this is something that I've discussed in a recent video um, with Paul from Bog Street, we were talking about pricing. And he injection molds his stuff. Um, so there's no hand shaping and finishing and, and so on involved, but th there are different costs involved with that. And it, it's it's in some ways... If you know what the, the cast of the dies cost, or what? Yeah. Well, that's that's exactly because I've seen it in I've seen it in person, so it's kind of it's you know puts it in your head a wee bit, you know. Um, but for those of you who are you know who are aware of Stone Age but are not aware of how much actually goes into the pick that you buy, um, and I will say that I have a terrible habit of, and I'm always talking about this, but I have a terrible habit of rattling my pickups. When I play, like I've I hit all my bolts and my screws quite a lot, because that's just because they're risen out of the body, you know, and yeah, and I have never chipped one of these to date, and I'm not I'm not tickling them, you know. They so don't usually chip <coughs> or ever break while playing, but uh, you know I say usually because you know it is a stone, and you know there may be some weak spots in the forming but somehow I've, I've pushed like 5,000 of these out and, and you know there's a handful have you done 5,000? that have chipped yeah probably about 5,000 now that's wild I had yeah, no idea it was that up. many yeah it's, getting, it's definitely 4 to 5 I would say for those who are unaware can you fill in our viewers on what the process is from you getting the stone to it being done as much as you're happy to divulge, of course. Most of everything I'll, I'll produce is made from uh, agate. Um, it's just chosen for the um, the strength and um, durability, uh, the look, and uh, it, it makes a good guitar pick. Most guitar picks you do see will be agate um, and, and stone. So what I tend to do is get agate slices and um, you know they're available in many places um, so usually these are uh, Brazilian agate <clears throat> most of these stones that you see are irradiated or dyed uh, yeah irradiated they're irradiated <laughs> so they they do some stuff with chemicals and radiation 
they superheat this agate rock and they inject and dye, you know, infuse chemicals, what have you. This all happens in Brazil. I don't know how they do it. I've never, wow. I've honestly never seen it, but this is what they do. And so you see most of these agate slices aren't natural. I'll be straight and I'll front with you. And um, most of them are um, altered with dyes and, and whatnot. And um, so they usually come sold in a slice and um, everything is uh, cut out with, uh, you know, diamond uh, or carbide um, tile saw. And, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's very straightforward. You could see you cut it, but like, obviously there's some art to it, you know, chipping and cracking and how many picks you get out of a slice. You know, all these things get you to the end product and the, the finish. <clears throat> There's, um, if if anyone does traditional lapidary work, this isn't really it. I don't have like <laughs> a line of a million grits and wet sanders and all that. Everything's dry and shit. And uh, <laughs> basically... Uh, it's just a process that has taken me two years to figure out. And I'm right at the point where I feel like good about where it's at. It's just, you know, down to, you know, more symmetrical bevels, slightly more rounded bevel to give, you know, more glide. But, you know, that comes with the right amount of tumbling and all that. Yeah. So fine tuning that and putting out a very consistent product is what I'm about and you have a few so you know they roughly all conform to a certain bevel slope yes surface area most for the most part um, these things can change with uh, chips and cracks uh, I'm not mm-hmm. going to scrap a pick just because you know it ended up being smaller than a jazz uh, I'll somehow you know sell it as a micro jazz or something <laughs> and so the the surface area of the bevels, you know, it might be a, a harder, more accented bevel because of a chip, you know. So it, it is a grab mixed bag, but if, I haven't picked one up that I hated. I'll say that, you know. And, and uh, many people it, feel the same way. Does it matter in terms of? And I, I I'm asking this as a sort of um, like I I kind of know that there's something to do with this but stone like as far as i understand it and please please correct me because i'm hardly the expert here um but as far as i understand it stone has a grain much like wood does in a sense like it, it you can if you cut it a certain way it's gonna do things rather than coming at it from a certain angle i suppose is that the case or with certain stones and in, in grinding and in, in all yeah. that and I'd say, in my eyes, stone is almost more predictable than wood. Mm. Um, I don't want to say that. I, I kind of say that because I've worked with stone more, but yeah, I, I honestly haven't gotten much better. Um, it hasn't. It's just uh, finding the right steps, I would say. So, you know, um, stone's easier than wood to me. Um, you know, wood's very unpredictable in terms of knots and grain yeah. and this and that it's more prone to splitting what have you but uh i guess that comes with the user obviously and the and time you, spent with each material have your methods changed much in the last year or so in terms of i mean you talked about the steps and everything but have you right so i mean it's broken down in the you know maybe seven to ten um, different steps in terms of cutting the stone, beveling the stone, polishing the stone. But the the base cuts have all been similar to get the rough cut, you know. Um, most of it's on diamond, uh, diamond wheels. So that hasn't changed much. Um, the tumble time and shaping process has totally changed multiple times over, you know over the course of the two years but um also the polish and the finish um 
it's a carnuba based something or other but um that's changed and some will leave them slippery when you sweat some will leave them more uh grippy it's, it's odd but even the final polish that goes into it you know for the grip more so than any previous step so many things have changed but um overall it's the same these are micro adjustments you know since you started the company and still started going out into the world um or still started going out into the world how has the perception has the public perception of what you do change what's the feedback you've got from players and people in general right uh, well most of the players and customers that that use the pick when they pick it up they they feel they feel the work that's gone into it i guess they really most tend to understand that stone's not an easy medium to work with obviously <clears throat> not even more so the um the the, um, expenses that come along with it but the time spent on the skill to acquire to to get the finished product that's mostly um, where I I see the value um, you know and where that money is is went to a lot of trial and error and you know products wasted product you know machines breaking but the um, the perception has been good because when they see it they know that um, this thing's not really doing much. It's going to stay the same as when they bought it. Uh, many people have, they resell them. So they'll play with it for a year. Nothing will, nothing, essentially, it look like you just pulled it out of the bag that you got it in. Yeah. And um, they'll resell it at about 75% the value. Yeah. And these, some some person at eight picks, I think they were selling. I reposted it to a Instagram story. I had been sold out at the time, and he sold like six of the picks in just a couple hours. So I mean, the retained it's value, cool. <laughs> the, the retained value I see. I mean, it's they're not for everybody, but when you get one and you pick it up and you play with it, you'll you'll realize that. <laughs> it's it's not that expensive um, in terms of offering free worldwide shipping um, and, and, and the also added feature of yeah, they do break if you drop them you know say it be on tile flooring or something but in that case if you send me a picture of a broken pick I'll, I'll honor 50% off a new one so you're, just, you're buying into um, continued loyalty between me and you as a customer um it's 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 definitely like a family i feel more community um <clears throat> driven on, on instagram with the reposting and, you know seeing artists that i believe in and you know endorsed or not you know i'll see you if you, you could be struggling with smoke on the water i'll still repost you if you tag us you know yeah so it's 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 definitely rewarding to have that connection with the musician. <coughs> You're not just now, buying a pick, you know. This pick here, this is the pink gin, because I name all, I name all the picks that I get off of you because you don't have any model names. So uh, this was the one that I did my first Stone Age video about, and I remember you saying to me, I remember you saying to me, if you give me give me a shout in ten years. And that thing will be exactly the same. So I haven't forgotten. Don't worry about that. And I've been using it quite a bit. Uh, now, in our um, this couple of other things, I want to ask you very quickly. Uh, I know you. I've seen a few other things that you've done with laser etching and, and so on and so forth. Um, what have you got now that you've you've got this established name in the trade, and certainly. Everybody in the pit community, and I will tell you this, everybody in the pit community knows about Stone Age. Um, it's, it's just one of those things. So what have you got coming up that you can talk about, of course? What have you, what's next for Stone Age on the, on the cards? Well, being in the middle of a, 
a, an economic depression. And mm -hmm. I'm very hesitant to throw um, the, the brand's funds into into more um, extravagant avenues. I would say it's very it's very tough to mm -hmm. um, put together a whole assembly line, this and that. I, I know there may be demand, and people want to see more products. That'd be cool. Um, at the moment, it's just not happening in terms of a uh, um, fun allocation i mean you know i'm definitely pushing a lot of marketing because that's mm -hmm. what continues the flow of customers but the um the pickups and uh we have a pedal that's that's in the works so we'll go over the pickups very we'll like glaze over them so the um my hope would be to bring um boutique um, wood bobbined, um, hopefully later multi-scale too, but mostly in the extended range, um, market. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't even start off with sixes and, and, and just jump to seven, eight, wow. and hopefully nine at some point, you know, that's bold. Man. <laughs> but my, my thought is there's a gap in the market with, um, just, uh, um, pick up brands in general that offer the um that added string configuration for mm. for multi-scales as well i mean it's especially if you want to go wood bobbin and i'm especially a fan of the wood bobbin and the ones i developed were you know the whole design structured uh, around the wood bobbin so um that that's a possibility and i i do have like winders and and some wire um just the manpower and and um getting the process into an assembly line to actually do something with it it's down the road for sure but um yeah that would be my hope have you moved from a uh, have you moved from a one to a two person operation now for stone age now it's like two to four. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, like one's one's a, a <clears throat> kind of business consultant that just he's very young and, and very eager to help out and just see a, a fresh look on the business side of things while I figure out the production stuff. And mm -hmm. um, another thing on the way would be um, a water jet, which is something that that could step up production but also quality um so we have acquired said water jet but we're getting <laughs> it um we, we're getting it to do stone hopefully and uh, yeah that would i mean i don't it's totally hand finished work for sure at that point and that's how i will push it and it's going to take a lot of skill either way. Um, I've already proved I can make them from hand, but if you want to see it in mass and in a more consistent quality, that those are, these are the sacrifices you have to make. Yeah. So um, that that'll give a more symmetrical uh, cut. Um, all the hand bevel work and uh, polishing will all be the same. Y you wouldn't even know. You know that you that a different process was used but yeah. it, with this machine we may be able to do 10 times production with you know half as many people it's just this is how business is um you know i, I never there's no machine ever going to do bevels or anything so no. <laughs> you know but he's you know he's a good dude we'll, we'll get it done and um i have also an apprentice who like learns the, the bevel work um it, it yeah. takes just like any acquired skill, it takes a lot of practice and uh, learning the machine, how it responds, and um, you know the grinding wheel grits, and you know learning how to put that finishing touch on. It, right now, I am the only one who does the finish work, but but you know I'm, I'm setting it up so where that's all I got to do is the finish bevel work in this you know setting up someone who can do the the first rough beveling steps that'd be great um just 
you'll get a better product on the end and a better um, customer experience if I can if I can do more. Uh, yeah. So basically, I'm just trying to delegate the things I do to, to other responsible individuals. And um, my buddy Brett, shout out to Brett. He's been helping me with the social media side of things on Instagram for like probably a year and a half, a year now. Yeah. So he's been learning the ropes and just customer interaction and um, being being active on Instagram. So hopefully <clears throat> he'll be able to do. We'll be able to do that more full time. Um, and and, and just have me be able to do what I need to do it's, it's a lot of it's a lot it's not hard work but it's a lot of work I'll say yeah that. So. you've mentioned this pedal thing right I have is it are you making it is somebody else making it is it a collaborative thing or it's a very collaborative thing I would say so um, my uncle used to um, be employed by uh, Crest Audio, um, one of the founders, um, they, they make mixing consoles yeah. um, in the 80s, and um, Trident mixing consoles, all that, um, PV, who, who Crest bought, uh, PV bought Crest back in the 80s or whatever, but he made mixing boards for all three of these companies, and they still use his designs for some of the Trident board. All the stuff is still like in use today. Yeah. And... Um, he um, left Crest Audio and created APB Dynasonics, which is another uh, a really high-end mixing consoles. So he he's very familiar with analog audio. One of the you know smartest guys I know. He uh, he used to do some side work for another company that made um, microphone preamps. So he had this. Um, this this product out there it's it's a mic preamp <laughs> but it's uh, based off a of 12 ax7 okay and um, you know to tube preamp um, so it would be based off one of the um, mic preamps that he made um, and designed for a company that's no longer in business but um, it'll be modded a little more for um, uh, pedal use. So you would call this, uh, you know, to uh, it's a tube gain boost preamp, I would say. <clears throat> Simple kind of three or three, three or four knobs. Um, mm -hmm. And in that, like, from what I've used it, I've used, it's, it's a certain type of um, use of the 12AX7. Um, and this the circuit that I, I use it hit the mic preamp for a guitar preamp, and yeah. what I noticed is it's just it's loads of warmth and loads of gain if you want it, and uh, so that that's just something that could be in the works um, relatively soon because I've taken one of his boards and um, sent it off to a buddy in Taiwan, uh, Sunless Effects. He's he's a good dude on Instagram. Oh yeah, I know Sunless. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he's he's helped me. He's like retraced the board and everything, and um, we're just like kind of tweaking it to be more of a um, guitar related, um, you know, scrapping the XLRs and all the phantom power and just making yeah. it the quarter and then and, and adding some filters and, and uh, EQs or whatever. But it, it's something that I really believe in because I've man, I've hooked this thing up, this thing to like a, I have a small ten. 10 it's like a 12 watt um tube amp that i bought off ebay it's just like one 6l6 um a 5y3 and a mm -hmm. 12 x 7 but this thing doesn't do much but yeah. man i throw on that preamp and i and i am i give it some gain and that, that extra t tube really gives it that that punch and i notice it so i, I i'm gonna put it out and see how it does why not? My uncle did eventually pass away a couple of years ago, but what I would like to do is somehow uh, diverge some of those funds to um, the medical research for uh, the lymphoma that he mm. was diagnosed with. And, um, you know, I think that'd be very cool. 
I have access to his friend, some of his friends who um, worked on the Fender overdrive pedals. Some very, you know, high, high, high names up that I can talk to. So it'd be, it'd be pretty cool. That's wonderful. Has it got a name, this thing yet? Can you it say? doesn't, but I mean, once, once it's enclosed and, you know, it's got some cool look with some backlit LEDs and clear stuff where you could see the tube on the inside. So it'll look pretty cool. Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta, it's got to look good first, right? Oh, no, for sure. <laughs> That's very important. If people want to get any more info on Stone Age... Um, what's your site? Where can they go and follow you on the socials? Oh yeah, we can do the little transition from all the listings. We're on Etsy.com. Um, just with being uh, sold out, it, it was it was very tough transition. Just you know, I didn't want the customer to go to one spot and have it not be there and just be kind of left out dry. If they, because most of the updates are on Instagram, but yeah. uh, you can. Uh, you can now go to stoneageguitar.com, which will be, you know, that'll be operational from now on. And my hope is to uh, supplement Etsy and Reverb and basically every channel I could put them on if I have the stock. So, you know, after there's a good 25 picks or so on the um, stoneageguitar.com, They'll, they'll go to the Etsy and then to Reverb probably. You know, since it's like obviously one one off product, the unique to each listing, you're not going to, you know, it's good to check all platforms if you want to, if you want to see the best selection, you know, you got to be hunting for them. Yeah. And you do a countdown as well. There's a countdown timer on, on Instagram yes, and stories every time you post stuff. The way the countdown works, I'm trying to pick a day more so nowadays. Now that there's stock, I want to pick uh, one day, hopefully. But right now, it's like two or three times a week, uh, 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can um, check, you know, check the site, and usually they're refreshed then, 8 to 9 p.m. But I'll usually post a an update in the Instagram stories about, you know, roughly what time they'll be posted so there will be a countdown you can set alerts for this countdown that's probably your best bet um, on how to like see w exactly when they're dropping because uh, you know people people tend to camp it and they're looking for that two millimeter pick yeah and, um, they're, they're not there unless you're there oh for sure well I shall then say Matt thank you very very much um for for coming on uh, heavy ripping i really really can't thank you enough and all the best of luck that i'm sure you will need for the future uh and i shall see you on the gram so i hope you enjoyed our little discourse uh, it's always a pleasure to sit down and talk with the makers uh, you can find out anything you want at the link in the description for Stone Age Guitar Picks. And if you would like any more information on the Plexoverse as a whole, you can go to heavyripping.com or follow me on Instagram at heavyripping. I'll be back with more videos from the Plexoverse, interviews, reviews, the Plexicon, uh, the science and more. But in the meantime, my name is John Tron Davidson. This is heavy repping and I shall see you soon. So just remember, if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard and rep heavy. <laughs>